F122, the most brilliant F1 game produced, but why is everyone angry with it? Well, this was EA's first opportunity to bring some change upon the F1 game franchise after acquiring Codemasters. So where did it all go wrong, and why does everything that shows up on social media seem to be against or negative towards the F122 game? Well, my friends, we're going to be taking a deep dive into all the issues you guys have been complaining about, but first let's take a look at the performance of the F122 game in comparison to its predecessor, the F122. 2021 game. Looking at the stats of the F1 game over the past five years, you can clearly see that the F1 22 game didn't reach as high of a peak in popularity as the F1 2021 game. But this could be for a few reasons, as the F1 2021 game was on a short time schedule for its release, not knowing much about what the game was going to show before it was launched. Whereas the F1 22 game had a lot of information shown before the launch of the game earlier on, which kind of limited its peak in popularity and spread it out over a longer duration of time. So with that being said, we can take a look at the F1 22 and F1 2021 Steam charts to compare the stats between the two to see if F1 22 is actually dropping. And as you can see, the stats say the difference is negligible, with the all-time peak in players being a difference of around 2,000. So the player base might be slightly smaller than last year, but it's not much worth talking about. With that all being said, let's get on to the reason why gamers are angry with the F1 22 game. No beta test. What could possibly go wrong? The F122 game Champions Edition was set to be scheduled to release on the 28th of June, but it didn't. For Steam players, there was an issue with the game releasing on the Steam platform, and therefore everyone on the PlayStation and Xbox got to play the game on the 28th of June as they should if they had access to the Champions Edition, which allowed the player to play the game a couple days early. However, this was not the case on Steam as the game was released a day later than it should have been, meaning that the $20 difference between the Standard Edition and the Champions Edition was basically worth nothing. $20 went down the drain. But this gave EA a brilliant idea. If you bought the Champions Edition of the F122 game on Steam, log in now until 5pm UTC on June 30th to get a 4,300 XP boost. Crisis averted. Brilliant strategy. As you can tell, the F1 gamers were thrilled with this announcement. This is what you call compensation? Laughing my ass off, what a joke. That is a joke in comparison to how much time we have lost waiting for you guys to fix the release. Would be great if it didn't crash when I tried to play. Personally, I just thought it was funny that they gave you the only currency that you could earn in the game by yourself, and not the currency that would be equivalent to spending money on the game, which would be Bitcoin because Bitcoin gives you an awesome variety to buy awesome things. But don't worry, if you bought the Champions Edition, you still had access to some exclusive supercars in the form of the F1 safety cars. And that brings me to my next point. I'm sure they had good intentions when they introduced supercars into the F122 game, but I much would have preferred if they focused on the core game mechanics of the game, being career mode and online. Because literally, none of my friends that play the game actually asked for this. Now, speaking of career mode, I want to talk about this. The AI are way too aggressive. Compared to last year even, they were pretty aggressive, but now they're just ridiculously aggressive. The AI are so overpowered as well, that even Yano Otmir, reigning esports champion, has an issue with keeping up with the AI. After digging into this issue from fellow YouTuber Alex Gillen, he posted on Twitter that the issue comes from the weight of the F1 cars that the AI drive in comparison to the player and the fact that they have perfect traction. Removing the perfect traction from the AI seems to reduce their speed by around 6 tenths of a second around this track in particular. So. What's the issue? Why can't they just patch this straight away? Well, coding really isn't that simple because if they use this as a hot patch, it's probably going to break something else. I don't know if you noticed on formation lamps when you actually light up the rear tires, the car in front of you also lights up the rear tires because the AI is synchronized to the player car. The more you break, the more the AI breaks, and that's to avoid hitting you when you're battling wheel to wheel. The more you light up the rear tires, the more the AI light up the rear tires on the formation lap as well. Furthermore, the recent patch that Codemasters released actually made the AI even more stronger and has made all the time trial times on the leaderboard redundant. And also, all the setups created for the previous handling model do not work with the current handling model anymore. This left esports drivers such as Nicholas Longay with some frustration as it removed part of the skill gap. And because the AI got even more strong, obviously the YouTubers that are associated with career modes such as Team at Marduk also 
were left very frustrated. Not to mention that a lot of people were just not happy with the new handling model and preferred the old one. Now it's fair to say that the F122 game has a few bugs. There was one bug in particular that I actually told Codemasters about before the game was even released and that is the F1 2021 car showing up on the custom setup image which still isn't fixed to this day by the way. And various audio clipping issues were also apparent but the bugs just kept rolling in and the community just kept on posting and posting more and more bugs. Please just go away, we're doing our best to fix it, there's nothing much more we can do. But my favourite bug returned and that is the breakdancing barrier glitch. And that is when you hit a tech pro barrier, the barrier starts breakdancing. With more variety being added to this year's edition of the F1 game, you are able to select more settings for your aero setup. This would have been great, but people just seem to like Zero Zero Wings better than anything else apparently, so that's removed any variety in the setup altogether. Whereas last year's game had a pretty decent variety between tracks as to what type of setup you would use. Furthermore, platforms such as PC and PlayStation have literal different force feedback feelings. It's like a different skill set that you need to race on each platform. And this does not bode well considering that they plan to make this game crossplay between all platforms. Online lobbies are still incredibly unstable, as you can see many examples if you haven't played the game already yourself. With the introduction of virtual reality, it was so unstable that it made it virtually unplayable for a lot of early game players that were new to virtual reality. Even Jimmy Broadbent was unable to get virtual reality working on the F122 game, which prevented him basically making a video on it and a missed opportunity for Codemasters to reap the good positivity that that would have brought. While it was expected that crossplay wouldn't have arrived yet, it's still a bit disappointing that players can't play with their friends on different platforms. Also, it's feared that the parity between platforms could be advantageous to some, let's just say. While it wasn't expected, DLC tracks still haven't arrived yet as well, but it is only rumored that Portimao and China would be returning to the F1 game from last year's game. And somebody even released fake news that Hockenheim would be added to the game, but this was just a fake leak. And honestly, it baited me too, so you got me. To add to the frustration, laser scan tracks have not been added to the game yet again. This is a missed opportunity, I believe, from Codemasters to make a lot of the fan base happy and appreciate more accurate tracks to real life. And to add on top of that, there's been no real major updates to the tracks that have already been out in previous years games, apart from the big three being Australia, Abu Dhabi and Spain, where real life changes were made to the real tracks. Another downfall from this year's game is the further limitation of the damage model. A lot of players were eager to see some changes to the damage model, but that has not come to fruition. And let's be real, this is probably most likely due to the licensing of the F1 game, where the teams don't want to see dirty drivers mess up their card to the point it's not recognizable anymore. Yes, I'm talking about you, don't try to run from it. However, there are some new features added to the F1 22 game that weren't a part of F1 2021, such as there's no Mazepin. Is, is that it? Uh, we got more? Okay. Um. There's also the introduction of Miami, the new track that's been added to the F122 calendar, and also supercars. VR is probably the coolest thing that's been added to the game, but while it's still a bit janky, and I'm sure they'll work on it, there is a lot left to be desired. Now, Codemasters are doing their best to fix this game, and while it's going to take some time, just look at examples such as No Man's Sky, where they turned a game around and the community ended up enjoying it. They've still got a few tricks up their sleeve with the release of DLC and crossplay, so stay hopeful for that. And uh, it still remains to be seen whether they can turn this thing around, but I hope for everyone's sake that they can and I look forward to hopefully enjoying these changes whenever they do come. There is still a good game to be had underneath all the troubles and drama upon its release, and let's hope they fix all the bugs, they fix the handling model, and most importantly, the AI, because they are so overpowered. And we've seen similar drama with the release of Gran Turismo 7. A lot of people dislike the currency within that game and the bugs that came along with it, so it's not like Codemasters and F1 are the only ones going through the same experience. If they manage to improve this game, the ratings will surely improve. As of right now, the current audience rating is 2.8 out of 5, and on Steam, it's a 6 out of 10, which is very mediocre, to say the least. As a fan of F1 and all the F1 YouTubers would surely say the same, please resolve these issues and we'll have a great game and it'll be so much more playable and a fun experience for everyone. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like, and if you'd like to have a laugh, be sure to check out my Dirty Drivers videos, and until next time, I'll see you all on a new one.